I wish someone told me this sooner. As a battery scientist and engineer, I know that batteries are the key to sustainability and national security in the United States. But I didn't know exactly where we are at and where we need to go to reach our clean energy and security goals, or even what the goals were. It turns out in 2022, the US Department of Energy brought together battery experts in the United States to talk about what's the strategy that's needed to reach these goals. And what they came up with was a report called the Lybridge Industry Report. This report spells out a strategy to reach a lithium battery value chain in the United States that is sustainable and robust. Think of it as a roadmap or a blueprint for the US to ensure that it has the batteries it needs to reach its national interests. Now, this is the major takeaway of the report. It's this goal that the US needs to be capturing 60% of lithium batteries economic value by 2030. And if you're like me and wondering, okay, well, if we need to meet 60%, where are we now? The answer is 30%. We're only extracting 30% of the economic value of lithium batteries today. So we need double that amount by 2030. That seems like a long way off, but it, the good news is that the report includes a strategy to get there. The report's not just about the problems and the challenges, it's about recommendations and goals. How are we gonna make the battery value chain a thing in the US and even more broadly in North America? And this is why I wanted to make this video. There are so many brilliant people working so hard in this industry to bring about this battery value chain. And I wanna make sure that everyone knows what are the goals we're working towards and what are the recommendations from the experts. As I work supporting my clients, I always like to think why, why am I working so hard to do what I do? And this report gave me a lot of context that I need, not just context for my work, but to help guide my clients. You don't wanna reinvent the wheel. This report is gold and can help you phrase asks for different resources from both private and public investment. If you're in a department from within your bigger company, and this can help you position yourself within your organization so that you can work towards these broader goals. What's needed for the battery value chain in the United States? So let's start with where are we today? The US is playing catch up in the battery race and it's costing us billions. We need batteries made in the USA, not just for electric vehicles, but for the grid, for consumer electronics like our phones, and for even military applications. More and more, we're seeing this lack of a robust battery supply chain as a US national security risk. It leaves our grid vulnerable and you can't be a leader in AI if you're not a leader in batteries. How are we gonna power those data centers? But how will we get there? Who's steering this ship to make sure that all these companies and organizations are on the right track towards reaching those national interests? Making sure we don't miss out on the $33 billion that we're already missing out on because we're not capturing all that economic value of our lithium batteries. I'm excited to share what US battery experts are recommending so that you too can be a leader as we build the US battery value chain. Let's take a look at the current state of the US battery value chain and how far we are behind. Ever wonder why we have to get so many of our batteries in the US from overseas? Well, imagine you're a chef and you have this idea of a delicious meal you want to cook, but you don't have any pots and pans and the local farmer's market doesn't carry the produce you need and your kitchen staff, well, they don't even know how to work an oven properly. It's really frustrating, right? That's kind of where the US battery industry is. According to the Lybridge Industry Report, we're importing 70% of our battery materials. And this isn't because we don't have the resources, it's simply because we don't have the systems to connect the dots. There's not an established supply chain domestically. Now currently, China captures 90% of the economic value of its lithium batteries in China and the US only captures 30% of ours. That's a big gap that's leading to challenges for us. This matters for three big reasons. There's our economic power, our national security, and our climate goals. Without a robust battery value chain, we aren't going to be a tech leader. Our security will be compromised and say goodbye to our climate targets. You need to know this if you're working in the battery industry. These are the US battery value chain goals. And there are five of them as recommended by the Lybridge report. They are attract investment, innovation support, resource security, workforce development, and US public-private partnership. 
I'd really love to see US battery companies communicating which goals they're working towards. So I created graphics for these US battery value chain goals and you can use them in your messaging. See the link in the description to get the US battery value chain goals graphics. The first goal in the Lightbridge report is attract investment. We need $100 billion of investment to reach this 2030 goal. Unfortunately, investors are hesitant to invest in mining projects or manufacturing projects because it's a long-term investment. There's not a high short-term return. Now, Asian investors don't really mind the low ROI or the regulatory approval process that companies have to go through. And that process can cause a lot of uncertainty. US investors would rather put their money elsewhere. With the current investments as of 2025 this year, we are only half of the way there to that $100 billion. And these investments need to be in place now if we want to reach those goals by 2030. So that's why we need to improve the attractiveness of investments for US battery technologies and manufacturing. This would mean better supply and demand sided incentives that push and favor localization of production and R&D in the United States. The second goal of the Lybridge report is innovation support. Do you know how long it takes to get a cell design from just an idea to actual R&D pilot line production through gigascale manufacturing? Well, companies these days are trying to do it in just two years, but it typically takes much longer than that. We need to move from ideas to products fast. And so we need support for the innovation. I talk with a lot of battery companies and they are all under pressure to innovate rapidly and scale quickly. Some companies have even skipped from the R&D to the giga scale and unfortunately we've seen some of them go bankrupt. It is incredibly challenging and everyone working on that should give themselves a pat on the back. There's a big issue right now in that in the United States, there's not a ton of R&D facilities specifically for helping companies scale from pilot line to gigascale production. Get this, when the Lybridge report came out in 2022, there was only one megawatt hour per year of production for an R&D scale cell production and one to 500 megawatt hours of capacity for pilot scale production. The lack of availability increases costs and causes issues when it comes to the time to, to qualify and produce these cells. It makes it really hard for those early stage or even mid-sized companies to succeed when it takes so much time and money. And we need to be commercializing this technology yesterday. This second objective is really to support research, enable product and business model innovation, and accelerate pathways to commercialization from both R&D and validation stages. The Lybridge report spells out so many ways that innovation needs to be supported. We need more R&D funding, pre-commercial scale production lines, harmonizing standards for energy storage systems across jurisdictions, and defining standards for battery technologies like micromobility and EV tolls. We also need to educate stakeholders on the existing standards. We already have bodies that are working on industry standards and exchanging notes, and we need to make sure all of this is harmonized. We don't want any overlapping or competing regulations. This commercialization support is critical, and that's why my company, Pistana Solutions, focuses on exactly that. Through my company, I support businesses with business development and marketing. And I especially love working with high-tech companies with complicated technology, where it's really difficult to communicate what the technology is and what its benefits are. And that's where I come in and help you form those strategies and messaging, help you create content to get in front of the right audience with the right message. So many companies are struggling with this right now and part of the problem is that the battery industry itself is very siloed and it's really a who knows who kind of industry. And to tap into that network to really make the connections you need to get the quality leads takes so much time. And so it helps to partner with someone like me who could provide those introductions that you need to get those quality leads. We've got to speed up the process and reach those goals. And that brings us to the third goal of the Lybridge report, which is resource security. Lithium, cobalt, nickel, copper, you name it. These companies need these materials to build batteries. The US's current dependence on vulnerable global supply chains is a risk. As we know, lithium batteries are a key 
part of our products, our devices, our technology, and even technologies that are yet to be invented. And the thing is, it's not just about the US battery value chain and the jobs created there. These products development, sale, and servicing accounts for 20 times more than the battery industry's gross domestic product and jobs. US national security will remain endangered if we're reliant on foreign countries for our battery materials and our battery cells. And for climate goals, if the United States doesn't have batteries, then how are we going to reach our greenhouse gas emission targets? Those need to be decreased by 40% by 2030. And by 2050, we wanna reach net zero carbon emissions. So I don't mean to scare you, this is a little alarming, but this is why we have this third objective. We need to help US companies secure the supply chain of battery materials and cells. To help US companies secure critical minerals and energy materials, we're talking virgin and recycled, domestic and foreign sourced, and low carbon infrastructure. This requires a lot of effort and Lybridge really spells out all that we need to focus on. The fourth goal of the Lybridge report is workforce development. Building batteries isn't just about technology, it's about people. Over 120,000 skilled workers are needed to reach our 2030 goals. There is a lack of domestic technical know-how around midstream activities like battery and cell manufacturing, as well as material processing. We need more trainings on high volume production, battery grade material processing, active material and component production, cell manufacturing, and end of life battery logistics. This fourth objective is to address these gaps in knowledge through workforce training. Training. We need curriculum and trainings and people to train people and a council, the National Battery Workforce Council, to bring all of this together and make sure that the workforce has what it needs to upskill. Since this report was written in 2022, there now is a council. They have a website, but I haven't seen much action there. So I want to tell you that this council was created, but I've been having trouble getting in touch and seeing where they're at now. But this council is to bring together people from companies, industry, academia, government, and other organizations and coordinate the national workforce objectives. This goal of workforce development is another objective that I am working towards in my own business with Nanoverse Battery Courses. Visit batterycourses.com for quality courses on battery technology and the industry. And the fifth and final goal of the Lybridge Report is US public-private partnerships. It is quite a thing to orchestrate the creation of a battery supply chain in such a short amount of time. You of course need collaboration across all these different parties, the government, industry, and communities all working together to create the US battery value chain. This goal is how we make this vision a reality. We need to establish an enduring US public-private partnership amongst all these stakeholders in order to bring about this North American battery value chain, or specifically the US battery value chain. The report specifies that we need to have a coordinated council that makes sure that everyone stays on task, knows the objectives, and follows through. The report calls this a central program management office. Now this report was written in 2022, now it's 2025, and there still is a library, and they may even meet this year if we have enough federal funding, which we'll see. And so it's about time that, you know, the gang gets back together, the Lybridge gang, and works on the next report. You know, where are we now? Where, how far have we come? And where do we have to go now? Especially given the change in the presidential administration. To sum this all up, the big picture. By 2030, we need to have 60% of the economic value of batteries produced in the United States. That's $33 billion of value that we keep here and 100,000 direct jobs. And by 2050, we can be almost completely self-reliant with most materials coming from recycled batteries. How cool would that be? But we are not there yet. And we have some serious challenges to overcome. Like we need more investment. We need permitting to be a bit faster so that we can scale quicker and produce the cells we need. And we're still so reliant on foreign countries. We really need to shift our focus and make sure that we're sourcing it domestically or at least from countries that we have a free trade agreement with. This is why we need continued action and fast. And you are a part of this. Yes, you. 
To be a leader in the US battery industry today, do these five things. And this is to work towards those US battery value chain goals. First, understand what objectives you are directly working towards. Determine who else out there has a shared mission. For instance, Pastana Solutions is working on objectives two, four, and five. We support high-tech companies with commercialization through business development and marketing, as well as technical consulting. Through this YouTube channel and Nanoverse Battery Courses, we're helping with workforce development, and we engage in public-private partnerships, including through professional societies. Are you working towards similar goals? Well, I would love to know. The second thing you could do is push for policy reforms to speed up the permitting processes. Already, it's February 2025, and the government is deregulating a lot of things. But there still may be some areas that we need to help guide them on to make sure that we get that smooth permitting process. So check your local policies, contact your representatives, and look for ways to support the battery value chain in your region. Be sure, as we're maybe deregulating things, to consider human and environmental health and wellness. We still want to hold corporations responsible for providing a quality of life into the future. Consider what community groups are local to you and get involved or at least stay aware of what activities they're doing and help provide input to help shape this battery industry. Focus on those objectives you stated in number one and see how those impact your local community. The fourth thing you can do is to advocate for your company or organization to work towards these objectives. First, you could show them this video so that they're more aware. Provide them a copy of the Lybridge report. Your company can also join a professional society that's orchestrating this creation of a US battery value chain. There's NatBat International or Standards Committees. And use that iconography, the graphics I created for the US battery value chain goals to communicate to different stakeholders or the world what objectives that your company is working towards. And the fifth and final action you can take to be a leader is to share your skills and experience. These days, there are so many different ways to engage in workforce development. I have this YouTube channel, but you could create a bot a blog. You could create a blog or a podcast. As I mentioned, I'm developing online courses on battery topics and I'm looking for subject matter experts to help co-create. Be sure to subscribe to my newsletter so that you can stay aware of opportunities to engage and support in workforce development. And even you could start small in your own workplace, have lunch and learns, or get your company to sponsor you for additional training. When it comes to these goals overall, companies and investors have the most power behind reaching them. According to the report, and I would agree that it's important for the industry to work together, we need to further define the industry needs and shape solutions that allow the US to participate more fully in lithium ion battery technology. We need to stay focused on the long game. This is about creating a resilient and sustainable future for us all. So there you have it, the US battery value chain goals. I would appreciate it if you'd click that like button, share this video and subscribe to my channel. And there will be more videos, of course, about batteries and the industry. Thanks for watching. See you soon.